In this lesson, we'll examine remainders. Now up to this point in the module, we have focused primarily on numbers that are divisible by other numbers. For example, we've learned that 21 is divisible by 7. We know this because when we divide 21 by 7, we get an integer, and that integer is 3. Another way to express divisibility is to say that 21 is divisible by 7 because when we divide 21 by 7, we get 3 with no remainder. In other words, the remainder here is 0. Conversely, if a number is not divisible by another number, we'll get a remainder other than 0. For example, 11 is not divisible by 4. And notice that when we divide 11 by 4, we get 2 with remainder 3. In other words, 4 divides into 11 2 times with remainder 3. Now there are various ways to denote remainders. In school, you may have expressed remainders this way, where the part after the R denotes the remainder. Here's another way to express remainders. Here the part inside the parentheses is the remainder. Now this is the notation I'll be using in this module, but you may see different notation in other resources. Also note that this remainder notation applies only to questions involving remainders. So for example, if you see this notation in any other context, it will stand for 2 times 3. Okay, just to be sure that you fully understand this concept, let's look at a few more examples. When we divide 67 by 10, we get 6 with remainder 7. When we divide 21 by 5, we get 4 with remainder 1. And finally, when we divide 45 by 9, we get 5 with remainder 0. This, by the way, means that 45 is divisible by 9. Now I should mention here that the concept of remainder only applies to positive integers. So you will never encounter a remainder question that has negative values. Okay, now let's examine some terminology. Here we have 11 divided by 4 equals 2 with remainder 3. The 11 here is called the dividend, 4 is called the divisor, 2 is the quotient, and 3 is the remainder. Now an important feature about remainders is that they are always greater than or equal to 0 and less than the divisor. For example, if we take some number n and divide it by 7, the remainder will be greater than or equal to 0 and less than 7. Now to solve questions involving remainders, we'll need some specific skills. The first skill is listing possible values. So let's say we're given some information about x. We're told that when x is divided by 7, the remainder is 2. So what are some possible values of x? Well, we're looking for numbers such that when we divide them by 7, the remainder is 2. So one possible value is 9. 9 divided by 7 equals 1 with remainder 2. Perfect. Another possible number is 16. What are some other ones? For example, is there a number less than 9 that has remainder 2 when we divide it by 7? Yes, 2 satisfies this condition because when we divide 2 by 7, we get 0 with remainder 2. Now here comes a very important observation. Notice that 9 can be expressed as 2, the remainder, plus 7, the divisor. Similarly, 16 can be expressed as 2 plus 7 plus 7. So to find other possible values of x, we'll keep adding 7 to the previous value, and so on. Now in general, if we're told that some number n divided by d yields a remainder of r, then the possible values of n will begin with the remainder r. The next possible value will be r plus the divisor d, then r plus 2d, then r plus 3d, and so on. So we now have a formula for listing possible values of a number if we're given information about the remainders and the divisors. Let's test out this rule with an example. When w is divided by 8, the remainder is 3. So what are some possible values of w? Well, the remainder here is 3. So this will be the first possible value of w. Next, since we're dividing by 8, this is the divisor. 
So to find other possible values of w, we'll add multiples of 8 to the remainder of 3. So the next possible value of w is 3 plus 1 8. Then 3 plus 2 8, then 3 plus 3 8, then 3 plus 4 8, and so on. When we evaluate these, we get the following as possible values of w. Alright, the next important technique is to rebuild the dividend. Here's what I mean. If we take the dividend 11 and divide it by 4, we get a quotient of 2 with remainder 3. Now we can take these three values and use them to create an equation that ends up equaling the dividend of 11. We can write 2 times 4 plus 3 equals 11. Similarly, since 34 divided by 5 equals 6 with remainder 4, we can take the three values shown here and use them to create an equation that ends up equaling the dividend 34. We can write 6 times 5 plus 4 is equal to 34. Let's try one more. Since 8 divided by 11 equals 0 with remainder 8, it must also be true that 0 times 11 plus 8 is equal to 8. In general, if n divided by d equals q with remainder r, then it must also be true that q times d plus r is equal to n. Let's now take this rule and use it to answer a question you might see on test day. You might want to pause the video now and try the question before continuing. Okay, the question tells us that when 5 is divided by b, the quotient is 2, and the remainder is c. From here we can apply this rule to conclude that 2 times b plus c must equal 5, which means the answer here is b. Ok, let's summarize. In this lesson we learned some important skills for tackling remainder questions.